Welcome to Bar Chart, series of webinars designed to educate you on a variety of market concepts, inform you of the features and tools Bar Chart provides related to these concepts, and finally to offer some traders insight to help you make a more informed investment decision. Today's subject, using candlestick patterns to enhance your technical analysis. Candlestick charts and candlestick pattern trading have become prevalent in most traders' technical analysis toolbox because these patterns and the candles themselves make it easy for traders to visualize this battle between bulls and bears. Most candlestick patterns potentially forecast price reversals, but traders need to take into consideration the level of these patterns, the locations, the pattern's relationship to prevailing trends, multiple time frame intervals, and the broader perspective of candlestick behavior characteristics with our traditional Western technical analysis in order for them to be effective. Hello, everyone. My name is John Rowland, and I'm Bar Chart's head of trading education. And today I wanted to examine the idea of putting candlesticks and candlestick patterns in the right context when it comes to time frames, trends, price actions, proportions within a candle and throughout the pattern. Plus, I'd like to also show you how to enhance the reliability of candlesticks predictive power with our traditional technical analysis by also showing you three of my favorite patterns. But before we get to that, please welcome my partner and our moderator, Bar Charts Project Director, Gene Baker. Hello, Gene. Happy, happy November, John. How are wow, you? Wow, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Time flies. Especially when we get a little bit older, right? It just like seems like every year goes that much faster. Oh, who's getting old? Not me. <laughs> I tell you what, I am definitely getting old, that's for sure. Okay. Wait until you I reference a toy later in my my webinar, and then you'll get a chuckle how old I really am. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right. We'll be listening. All right. You ready? Yes. Okay. Let's get started. All right. Just to remind you that today's session is for educational purposes only and decisions to buy, sell, or hold uh, securities, commodities, or any other investment involves risk and best made on the advice of a qualified financial professional. And the techniques that I'm going to show you today based on candlesticks and the past performance of them are no guarantee of future results. And under no circumstances shall we be liable for any losses or damage you or anyone else incurs as a result of trading or investment activity that you or anyone else engages is based on the information or material you receive barchart.com and or our services. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about candlestick history and theory. Uh, is based on the teachings of 17th century rice trader who wanted a way to visualize the battles between, visualize price battles between uh, buyers and sellers. Modern theory believes that candlesticks can alert us of changes in trends and price movements. And what makes candlestick charting unique is this emphasis on the part of the candle called the real body. And this is the difference between the opening and closing prices and how important that we have to wait for a candle to close before we make any assumptions or inclinations. And finally, candlestick theory itself is not a trading system. It's just another tool that gives us insight into price action. So hang on, all right. So what I wanted to do here before we jump into the meat and potatoes of our discussion is I want to give you some uh, reference material that we have on our website. First of all, in the under the learn tab up here, you can see on the top header in the site education down here, it says interactive chart bar charts uh, types. And here's 
identifying candlestick patterns. This is a file that we have on our website that is attached to some of the recent uh, candlestick webinars that we've had. And you have like 17 or 18 different common candlestick patterns. And each one of these, you're gonna get a little bit of a, uh, a picture, a kind of a textbook picture about you know what it what the pattern does, um, what it kind of looks like, and also just some general uh, risk management where you would place a stop, where you'd look for price to go to give you a confirmational entry, and you also you will get you know a real life example because what looks like in the textbooks doesn't always is what it looks like in the real life. So. Um, I wanted you guys to be aware of that. And also uh, in our archive webinars, we have under select topics, we have a several uh, webinars that deal with candlestick patterns. And the three that I wanna point out are these three on the bottom. And this is a series that we did last year of three uh, from bottom to top. Uh, where we go through understanding candles, sticks, the theory, and then how to kind of apply it. So today is kind of a build up on top of that. You don't need to have uh, watched these webinars to watch today's session, but I just wanted to point them out as to themselves a resource reference for you. Hey, John, before yes. you leave the webinars page, scroll back up to the top, please, and go to uh, today's or upcoming webinars. Well, actually, right there, using candlestick patterns, that's the one that we're in right now. I've had a, people, a couple people ask whether there's a PDF of your slides, so go ahead and click on that. And uh, everybody, if you go to the archive webinars page, right there, download the slides PDF version. That's where you'll find them. Thanks, Jean. Yeah, so, so there's the slides from the previous sessions, but also that main file in the reference section is also part of uh, some of the PDFs that we've already created for candlesticks. All right, so let's do this. Okay, so what are we talking about when uh, we start looking at candlesticks? Now, candlesticks are very similar to our open, high, low, close bar charts. The difference is that the opening and the closing price range creates something called the real body. And this box or this range of price determines if the candle color shown and here green for a close that is above whoops, the opening price. In other words, an up candle or the red candle over here is where the close is below the opening price. And that is gonna determine how our candles are created this difference between the opens the closes our opens and our closes okay now traditional candlesticks uh if you look at other platforms or some trading platforms traditional candlesticks are what we call empty candles or hollow candles a bar chart uses we terminology hollow candles and then these ones are shown where the uh, up candles are empty bottles excuse me not bottles empty bodies and the down candles are filled in bodies and so for you can see for our um, website that we use uh, these red and white candles, white again rep representing a hollow candle which you representing an up day and a red candle representing a down day. Now in the help session section uh, that goes into a little bit more detail what how you can uh, decipher you know the outlines as well. But notice that we do have a few black candles. Now these are kind of outliers. So remember we said a filled in candle is a down candle, but a black candle here is a little bit different. What this candle is doing is it's actually a candle that is up for the day based on the previous day's close, but the opening price and the closing price, the 
closing price is below the opening price. So this is actually a down day candle that is closed above the previous day. So these are unique type candles and it's a nice, nice style how we um, uh, set them aside in the hollows. Now there are other types of candlestick uh, charts. The more common or traditional one is a candlestick that is uses the close to close. And this is where the candle is colored based on the price of the previous day's close. So as long as price closes above on the next day on this candle or next candle, then that will be a green candle, it closes above. But there's also a candlestick uh, that is called the open to close candles. And these are the ones where we color coordinate the candle based on the price action of the candle itself. And so here we have a red candle. So you can see the same candle had three different colors to based on three different uh, types of candlestick charting. And this one, the close, open to close, is just telling me that for this particular candle, the opening price was above the closing price and therefore creates a red candle. Now, which one is better than the other? It's really just the preference of the trader. Personally, I like to use the open to close candles because I wanna see that internal bias or that internal sentiment of the battle between bulls and bears inside of each candle. That's just a preference that I use. It doesn't mean that it's right or wrong or if you wanna use one of the other types of candle uh, charting processes. Okay, so now that, well, let me go back here for a second. So again, an up candle has a bullish sentiment and a down candle has a, a bearish sentiment. So once we have that sentiment kind of in our mind, we're gonna analyze the candlestick sentiment. And there are many ways that we can analyze this. Well, I'm just kind of giving you the top five, which we will work through today. So let's talk about trend. This is a simple logic, right? The candle's bias, either bullish or bearish, is with our trend or our dominant price action, then in, excuse me, in the time frame that that candle is being created, then this would be a continuation type candle. Now, if the candle is opposite of the prevailing price action or trend, then this would be a reversal candle. Now let's talk about this concept of trend and price action. When I'm talking about trend in candles in these examples, what I'm really talking about is what is the price action in the time frame that the candle is being created? So for example, if I'm looking at a 60 minute chart and I'm looking at 60 minute candles and I'm seeing an up moving price action, then the trend in the 60 minute time frame would be an uptrend. But if I look at that 60 minute time frame price action from a larger perspective, let's say a daily time frame, if I see price moving up into an area of supply or resistance or engaging a downtrend, and then I see a reversal candle in the 60 minute time frame. This might be just an indication to me that the appearance of a higher time frame trend is coming uh, to fruition. So when we talk about candlestick trends, we're really just talking about the price action that is occurring in the time frame that the candle is being created. Locations. So Bearish reversal candles work better when we locate them inside of areas of resistance, either the time frames that the candles are being created or those higher time frames. And we can also look for them after an extended upward price action. Again, that trend concept. Bullish reversals, we like to find them in or at support or at the end of an extended downtrend. Bearish continuations, well, we wanna find them after a bearish reversal and bullish continuations after 
a bullish reversal. Now, size for candles does matter. And large body candles alert us of this major imbalance between buyers and sellers, and it has a greater impact on price action. So no, I have Amazon up here. I'm on a 60 minute time frame. Notice how many large body red candles that we see. So what is this is telling us? Well, it's just telling us the overall sentiment of the market in this time frame is bearish. Right? And even though price fluctuated a little bit here, the overall trend is still trending lower because these larger candles are influencing price action now if we look at small size candles then it's less impactful and as well as the candle's color or its sentiment bias in other words its real body we're not going to get caught up in that we're just going to know that we're, it's a small range candle previous price action are the candles ranges decreasing uh, indicating a diminishing bullish or bearish bias. Now, here's an example in Microsoft, right? We have this down trending kind of price action, but what is happening to our candles? Well, our candles are going from large candles, which were influencing price to small candles, right? A diminishing of our price action. Plus, notice that even though price is falling on this set of candles, we're seeing a lot of little green candles, which is telling us that there's a change in the sentiment of the market. So again, just looking at an overall consensus of what the market is doing, what are the candles doing? Are they greater or bigger or are they smaller? And so previous price action will now start coming into our assessment and are these candles ranges decreasing right again talking about that bullish or bearish bias a relative proportion so what is the relative size of the preceding candle to the following candle again smaller range candles are lessening that internal candle sentiment uh, another example could be let's say uh, we see a series of rising candles that are increasing their upper shadows, but their bodies are getting smaller. And so here's a great example of that, right? We have a lot of nice green candles are trending up, but as we get to the top here, what is happening? Our candles are diminishing in size and our wicks or our shadows as most folks would refer to them, are getting longer, our upper shadows. What is this telling us? Well, the bulls are trying to push the market up, but the bears keep fighting back at the end of the day, right? And creating these longer shadows. Again, what's great about candlesticks is it's telling us there's this battle going on between bulls and bears. And it looks like even though the bulls are pushing the price up, that the bears are now coming into this market and starting to fight back. And then internal proportions. Where is the body located in the total range, the high to low? Is it in the upper percentile being bullish or is it in the lower being bearish? And hammers and hangmans uh, are really great examples of what I'm trying to uh, talk about here. So let's go back to our... site education, back to our candlestick patterns, and, you know, hammers, right? We have a body, a small body that's in the upper range. You know, here's an inverted hammer, a small body that's in the lower range. A hangman, small body is in the upper portion. Now, what's the difference between a hangman and a hammer? Well, a hammer is found at the end of of a downtrend or is a reversal candle where price has been falling and is signaling the reversal to the upside. And a hangman is found at the end of an up price movement and is in a reversal pattern telling us that price is gonna go lower.
So these five elements are kind of what we're gonna look for in terms of putting the pieces together. The next thing we're gonna talk about is confirmation with our Western or our traditional technical analysis. So here is really where the rubber meets the road. I'm not going to hang up on this minutia of what each little candle is telling me by their bias or their sentiment, but when they are telling me. In other words, what are the candles sticks saying when I'm anticipating something to happen? In other words, when I start using my traditional technical analysis. Again, I'm gonna look for reversal biases in zones of support or resistance or in trend lines or where the market is channeling or when price returns to a moving average. Day traders, uh, what is the candles doing uh, when we reach one of our floor pivots, right? Our trader floor pivots. And any of you who have been following a lot of my webinars, you know how I really believe in volume. And typically what we'll see is that volumes increase in tops and bottoms. And what is the candle that is being created by this volume? What is it telling us who's winning that battle? So let's jump in here and see if we can put kind of all this together while I explain to you my favorite three patterns. All right, so the first one I want to talk about are called pinchers or twins. I call them twins, but most folks, I think, will call them pinchers. Now, this form formation is very similar to the classic tweezers. The difference is that uh, tweezers look at similar highs where we're going to look at the close of this up candle here is going to be the same as the opening of this down candle. Now, the principles are the same in terms of tweezers versus printers or twins. They're both reversal patterns and they both are identifying supply. In other words, sellers. It's just the conditions are a little bit different. And why I like this one, um, well, let me hold off on that for a moment. So again, what we're gonna see is we like to find these after an extended price movement, uh, after an uptrend. And this is really gonna tell us that there's a reversal, sellers are coming back in, bulls have exhausted themselves to a cent, and that the market is going to move a little bit lower. Oh, I know I am. Uh, uh, did I lose my? Hang on a second. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's go to Apple and. What I did was, is this is a trade that I shared in one of our market and close sessions. And what we see here, well, we see Apple has been in this kind of this extended uh, uptrend, right? It's it's you know price action. Uh, this is the, the daily time frame is uh, moving up. Now, what am I anticipating? Well, price is starting to reach a level of resistance. Right? where I'm anticipating that price is going to change, right? It's going to reverse. And not only that, but there's also this little bit of a gap here. I love these kinds of trades, especially when um, price has traveled a long distance, come back and fill a gap. I really kind of find that these are great little trade setups. So I have two things that I'm looking at. Price is coming into an area of resistance, and I'm looking at a gap fill. And that's what is represented here by this red line. Now this is a daily chart, so let's drop down to a lower time frame. I'm going to go to a 60-minute time frame, and again, let's move over here to the left. And there's our up-trending market. There's our 175 resistance level, and what do we see? We 
you see a set of twins that were created in this higher time frame analysis. In other words, what is this is telling me, this candlestick pattern telling me is, is it's confirming to me that there's supply, that there are sellers up here, right? And that even though the bulls have been pushing this market up, 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 now they've come up against a roadblock or a wall. So let's take a second here and talk about the wicks or the shadows with uh, candlesticks in terms of our twins or our pinchers. So if we have two shadows that are identical, that would be a tweezer, right? Identical highs. And again, if I was going to rank that, that would probably be the strongest of the pincher patterns that I would want to see, where they are identical. But I also like to see it like this, where the green candle has the higher shadow or wick versus the red candle, because what is the price action telling us here? Here we see that bulls had pushed the price up, and then on the next candle, bulls try to push price back up again and try to take out that high. But bears came back and said, nope, wait a second, that's as far as you go and push price back. And so what we actually see here is the beginning of a downtrend. And a downtrend is de defined by a series of lower highs. And that is really what we kind of want to see in one of these scenarios. Now, what would be the third scenario? Well, the, where the green candle's wick or shadow is the smallest and the red candle is higher. Now, that doesn't take away from the twins concept. It's just telling us that wolves were able to push price a little bit higher on the second candle, and that maybe when price returns to uh, that level some other time in the future, that zone or that area of supply might not be as strong as it is as we see here, or if we have wicks of the same uh, length. Now, my currency traders, you should be living and dying by this pattern. You'll see this a lot in the currency markets. Now, I just picked any um, currency market. I just happened to be looking at this one this morning. And, oops. Did I pick the wrong one? Yeah, I did it. Excuse me, I picked the wrong one. I marked some of these up this morning. So there's this Canadian dollar and Australian dollar. And again, you know, this is a daily chart. And look at all these twins that are being created in our currencies. Now, what is this kind of really telling me? This is really the philosophy of why I like twins. Think about currencies, you know, you think about central banks and, you know, the, they influence currencies. What, when you see a set of twins, what you're really seeing is probably a large institutional trader, depending on what the market you're looking at, is telling you that they are, they are selling the market or they are bringing supply to the market. Now, when I was a large natural gas trader, um, many times when I was entering orders where I thought price was coming to a level that I wanted to sell, and now maybe I wouldn't put my whole order in it all at once. Maybe I'd piecemeal it in. Maybe I would scale into a position. And many times what I would discover is that, yeah, I could get a variety of prices, but the average price or the price of uh, most of the contracts are going to be right around the same value. And again, it's kind of this, uh, the close of one candle and the opening of another. And then when I look back on these candlestick patterns, after I looked at my own personal trading, I mean, I remember I was, at one time I was a very large trader, I was creating twins. And so why do I like twins is because I know the pattern works because I've seen it happen from experience from an institutional standpoint right so some of you are going to ask me can we find twins on the downside yes there is the same theory the yin and yang of candlesticks but i tend to kind of look for twins on 
upsides because I think they are a little bit more distinctive. We're going to talk about a different type of reversal pattern next on the downside. All right, I'm going to give you one more example here. And what I've done here is, let's go to a weekly chart first, is in this shadow box right here, you can see what we would define this as probably a shooting star or an evening star, depending on your vernacular uh, candlesticks. Now, this is a weekly chart. Now let's go to a daily chart. And notice what we see the wick or the shadow of that weekly morning excuse me evening star is a set of twins or a set of pinchers so this is where candlestick theory really works right a lower time frame is telling us that something is happening and that there's a change coming and so this set of twins set about creating a uh, these daily pinchers are turning around and set about creating that shooting star in the weekly uh, time frame, right? And that indicated to us that there is a change in our trend, change in our price action. All right. Okay. Bear with me, I just need to redo my screen. Okay. All right, so the next one we're going to talk about is called the three candle drop. And this is what I call my picture of crash. But what this really represents is an accumulation of selling that overwhelms our market price. Momentum accelerates, buyers step back, prices continue to accelerate until prices fall enough to attract buyers, and then sellers are filled or exhausted. Now, this pattern kind of looks like a cascading uh, waterfall. And again, to date myself, you know, remember that toy, the slinky that went down the stairs? Kind of looks like a slinky, right? Now, how are we gonna trade this, right? This is not a selling opportunity. This is actually a buying opportunity. We're gonna wait for the first green candle to close. Conditional, right? Close, confirmation that the selling wave has been completed. And then we're gonna buy when price breaks above that first green candle. And we're going to risk the lowest of the two points of the last two candles, whichever's shadow is the lowest. In this case, I use the red candle. and we're gonna wait for a price to get above that, that confirmation, all right? Now, these crashes can happen in all markets throughout all time frames. They don't have to be something extraordinary. It doesn't have to be like, you know, the crash of, you know, 1929. All it is, is just a major imbalance between buyers and sellers. So let me show you some historical um, uh, examples. Okay, so I'm going to go in here under my charts. I, these are some of the charts that I've uh, saved. So let's look at this one first. So this is the election night of 2016, and you can see that cascading sell off, right? There it is, right? And the key here is we really don't want to see a lot of wicks, right? We just kind of want to see price drop and then accelerate and then accelerate again, right? And again, you know, textbook versus real life. Yes, is this really four candles and this last candle is smaller than the, all of them? Yeah, but in essence, what we're seeing is this. This is the smallest, this is the medium, and this range here is the largest of the three. We wait for the green candle to close. And then once price breaks above that green candle, we risk the low of these two candles, and then price goes up. Now, before I move away from this chart, how did this selling start? Well, it all started 
from a set of twins. All right, uh, some of you might be familiar with the flash crash of May 2010. Some, some people call it a fat finger in, incident. And there we go. See how we can see that cascading sell off, right? This is actually a four candle crash, but the model is still the same, right? Smaller candle, larger candle, larger candle, and then the largest of ranges is the last candle. Now, is there are there exceptions to this model? Yes. Is this body smaller than this body? Yes, but the range is the largest. So sometimes what you will see is that this candle have a large range, but the body might start to shrink as the bulls start to fight back. Now, again, we wait for that green candle to close. That is important. And then we see price uh, moves up. I'll give you another example. All right, so we had one that was at uh, the, I think it was the 30 minute time frame. one at, at the one minute time frame. Now this, is an example of go back in time a little bit here it is this is the covid low there we go the bottom of the covid low the capitulation of the crash that was happening during COVID is created at a 30 minute time frame, And there it is, one, two, three. There's your green candle and then the market rallied. Imagine knowing this pattern at that time, uh, what you would have done with this, right? Think about this, no pain, right? You never were out of, out of the money on this trade. And now what? The, NASDAQ is trading 10,000, 11,000. Now you almost doubled your money just based on this one candle pattern. Okay. So let's look at a, a modern example. So here is uh, wheat. This is the December wheat futures contracts. And again, for my futures traders out there, uh, I find a lot of these crashes in like the 30 and 15 minute time frame, especially on intradays. And there you go, right? One, two, three, watch, this is the last candle. We wait for the green candle to close. And then we start seeing this kind of this staircase out, right? Have you heard that expression? Bears take the elevator, bulls take the stairs. But again, in our Western technical analysis, what are we trying to find these? Where are we trying to find these crash patterns? Are these little capitulations of these micro time frames. Well, we want to see a crash into an area of demand or a, a level of support. And so that's what we see. We see a crash that came into a level of support based on the wheat contract. Now, let's, before we move away from this chart, Notice our nice little channel up, our little staircase up. And we do see that we're now getting up towards this higher end of this channel before price reversed. Again, I'm in a daily time frame, So I'm anticipating that maybe something might be happening, especially if I look over here to the left and see you know, this big red candle. Remember, large candles are influencing price. Let's go to a smaller time frame. There's our channel. There's two little circles here. Let's see what they are. What do you guys think the, we're going to find? There we go. Twins. Twins that are being created in an area where we're anticipating price action is going to change now i just drew a red line based on the high of this red candle which ended up being the bodies of these two candles and again if i go back in time and see what that lines up with
Remember that big red candle we saw at the daily time frame? Well, look what it is, right? Another large candle that it's influencing price at a smaller time frame, and it happens to be a nice level of supply. So this is kind of the fractal nature of markets as well in terms of candlesticks, right? We're seeing this higher time frame price action. We are anticipating something to happen, and then I go down to the lower time frame, and I can confirm. Yeah, that there is something there, right? A smaller time frame area of supply, large candles dominating price action are inside of a large candle that is dominating price action. Now, the other thing that we can do is other Western technical analysis. You know, if I think prices move too far too fast, one of the things I can look at is Bollinger Bands. And Bollinger Bands, are a great way to look and see when price has uh, gotten too far extended for in itself. And notice that our two little twins is where our price action is outside of our Bollinger Band. And uh, hint, 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 we're gonna have a Bollinger Band session in the next couple of weeks. And we'll talk about a little bit more about this. But again, the blending of two uh, philosophies of trading, candlestick price action with traditional classic um, technical analysis. We're in a channel, we broke out of a Bollinger Band, we've come into an area of a higher time frame supply, we're anticipating that price is gonna reverse. Now, it doesn't mean that this trend is over, it just means that price has reverted. You know, where did it revert back to? Well, it reverted back uh, to the mean. Okay. So let's see what it went into. Okay, let's, before we move away from this one, I do want to talk about a, one more thing when it comes to um, twins, or excuse me, uh, this three candle drop. So there are some kind of rules that you need to be a little bit aware of, especially in terms of risk management. And we did talk about that you needed to wait for the green candle to close and that you would risk the lowest of the two points as your risk. But the other thing what we're going to do is we're going to start setting targets based on this previous price action. And the way we look at this is the first target is going to be where the last two candles broke right there. That would be our first target. Our second target would be where the first two candles broke. And our third target would be the origin of the move. So for day traders, it's a real good way to uh, help you set some uh, intraday market targets. The other th aspect of this crash is there is kind of a, a yin or yang or proportional um, predictability of it. In other words, uh, projection of where price could go. And so if price can recapture the origin of the down move, the origin of the crash, the three candle crash, and that's what this red line represents. I just drew it beforehand right there. What we can do is then measure a length movement above that, and that would tell us that this next uptrend and this next price action has an objective of that length, and it's very, very predictable in terms of this sense. And you can notice that we did where we ran into our twins, again, using, you know, the symmetry of markets uh, gave us, said, hey, you know, now I'm reaching this price objective. I need to be aware that price could eventually uh, reverse here. Okay. Well, that's the three candle drop or the uh, picture of a crash. All right, so the next ones I wanna talk about are called method, uh, three methods. Now, where the first two were uh, reversal patterns, uh, this is a continuation pattern. And we were gonna find these reversals um, after, excuse me, we're finding these patterns after one of these larger, higher time frame reversals, like the two that I just showed you. And what these patterns are doing is they're confirming our trend, our price action, 
and the time that they're being created is strengthening. In other words, it's a confirmation that price is going to continue in that direction. So a rising method is where the outside candles are green. A falling method is where the outside candles are red. Now the inside candle colors are irrelevant. Right? We just want to see small body range candles. So you could have a variety of reds and greens, uh, but if you have three reds or three greens, it just makes it a little bit more uh, uh, significant. Okay. So let's go back to Apple. a daily chart and there you go there it is so we have this uptrend right that price is moving right we say we want to wait for one of those reversal patterns so there's two little reversal patterns here and then we get a three method rising and price shoots up so there's two things that we can do with this type of pattern so first of all um, typically inside of this pattern, what we want to see is that volume is rising into the entry of the pattern. And then we want to see uh, volume fall inside the pattern. And then we want to see volume rise as price exits the pattern. So there we go. So we can see that we had a rise in volume as we entered the pattern, a fall of volume in the pattern. There's our three little birds right there. And then a rise in volume as we exit the pattern. Now, what? just as I showed you with the three candle cat, cat crash, uh, there are some predictabilities with this. So one of the things we can do is we can come back in here and we can draw a ray. And those of you who are familiar with classical bar uh, patterns, you know, this would be called a bull flag, right? A flag formation. So what we could do is we can measure the length of the leg into the pattern. Um, and then we can extrapolate once it breaks out that that would be our target. Notice that. Our target in this one was about where price uh, paused on this leg. The other thing that is unique about this type of pattern is it typically comes around, you know, the first third or about halfway through um, whatever our trend pattern is going to be. So you typically kind of find these like halfway through a pattern. So let me just do this. I'll kind of show you this is kind of cool right so here's a this we're going to take this high over here to this low and notice where our um price action our method rising occurred right in that 50 percent of this last down move but let's change this from there there we go to there again notice that the price movement that did come to fruition again that the three method rising was in that around that 50 percent uh, of range so that's a kind of cool little predictive value that these types of uh, patterns uh, produce and so let me give you a couple more examples Here's Visa. Now, again, theory that we can talk about theory versus, um, you know, textbook versus reality. And let's do this. So here we see actually a four method uh, falling. Now, what we don't see in here is that big candle. We see a little candle here. But there's kind of a theory that says that a, a gap is really in an explosive invisible candle so kind of i just drew this line right here and you can kind of see it now right there's your 
falling method falling, right? And again, you know, this happened a little bit farther than 50% in this price movement, but again, we could just measure that leg in and when it broke out, uh, that would give us a projective target to the downside. Now, I do notice on this projective downside is notice that this projection does fall in an area where we had recent um, support. So again, I would be looking for uh, an opportunity to exit a trade if I took this short on this breakout on the downside because of this, you know, technical analysis that this is a recent area of support. There's ConocoPhillips, it's a daily chart. Again, you know, textbook versus uh, reality. You know, this one is kind of skewed a little bit, but this is definitely a bear flag. There's our leg in, there's our leg out. And again, we can measure this, this leg out and you would project down around here as well. Again, a little bit deeper in this price trend, but definitely something you can see. Uh, and let me give you one more. And again, just kind of tease our Friday market on close session. This is one of the charts that we use a lot. But again, what did I say? An invisible candle or a gap is an invisible candle. So let's move this like that. And then you can see that three method rising. And again, if I measure the length of the trade, in this case, I gotta make this one just a little bit bigger. Our length in and our breakout, right? That would be a target for us based on this trend and you can see in this one this this one definitely looks like it's right in the middle of this last price movement okay all right gene um so i see a lot of questions here so let me do this for a second let me uh pause and read a couple questions anything that's coming up that's kind of common well, John, while you review the questions, let me just tell everybody uh, that we do have a couple levels of membership available to you. Now, any, everything that John's been talking about today, as far as you know, applying candlestick charts uh, or candles to your charts, that's something that you can do with the free membership. And um, along with that, we also have a bar chart premier membership, which allows you to uh, build custom my charts, you know, save specialized chart setups with uh, drawings and everything. So if you're not a uh, member of bar chart, I highly suggest that you just uh, at least create a free account, get started, start playing around with this. Uh, we also are recording. I've had a number of people ask about the recordings. You will get an email a little bit later on today with the link to the recording, or you can find that on the archived webinars page a little bit later on this, this afternoon. Okay, Gene, thanks. All right, so I see a lot of questions. They're all kind of the same idea. So let me see if I can kind of just sum up a few of them. So Michael asks a question, he says, I see a long fat candle and the wick is really, 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 really long up or down but I assume that price is rising or falling. However, how and why can it move that far and that fast? So Michael, what really is happening here is when you see a large wick or a large uh, shadow, especially in let's say a micro time frame, or when I mean a micro time frame, an intraday time frame, what you're really seeing is a lack of liquidity right kind of what we used to call a fast market and so price is allowed to move because there's this imbalance between buyers and sellers and that whichever way the price is moving that one side of the equation uh they're moving away so let's say we have a large wick to the upside 
Well, it's just telling you that sellers have said, hey, I'm not, I think there's too much volatility. I'm not willing to sell here. I'm going to step back. And what happens is the market seeks out, right? It seeks out buyers. It seeks out sellers. And that's why you can get these very large wicks. Once it discovers sellers, then a lot of times what happens is then buyers turn around and say, oh, maybe I don't want to buy up here. And then all of a sudden buyers evaporate and price goes down. Now, there's all the things going on. There's algorithms that are always testing the market. They're trying to find the, the you know, the where the selling is and when the buying is. Uh, a lot of times it, it is just this imbalance. Maybe you get a set of stops that went off on a cluster that was in a certain area. So you have an abundance of buyers. And then once all those orders are filled, that buying dries up. It turns to zero. And then what happens? Uh, price falls. So this brings it to a good point. And in terms of market analysis, in terms of candlestick analysis, is if I asked you, do you think price goes up because of buying or does price go up because of lack of selling? Now, most folks might say that price goes up for buying and really prices rise because of lack of selling. And that's why you can get these large wicks. The price, does price fall because of selling? No, well, price falls because there's no buyers, right? And market is seeking out where it can find buyers. So keep that in mind, Michael. Um, yeah, computers are definitely doing that, uh, Michael. All right. So there's a couple of questions here that are based on hindsight in terms of uh, looking at longer term uh, price action versus our shorter time frame price action. So as the example, I guess this is what Sherry's asking. In the example with the uh, GMRE. So, Sherry, what I'm saying to you is that if I'm anticipating a price action, right? Now, I haven't done the analysis on this, but let's see what happens. Let's see if there's something over here to the left. No, this was an all time high. So, I'm not anticipating this, right? But let's say I'm a buy and hold trader, right? I've had this stock in my portfolio. And now at the smaller time frame, the intraday time frame, I get a set of twins, right? What is that telling me? It's telling me that this price movement, this upward price movement, has now come to an end. That's all it's telling me. But then on a weekly basis, I get a lower weekly low lower weekly call and then that twin is kind of confirming to me so it was on top of my game that would have been that signal for me that hey you know what maybe it's time to take a little profit or at least move my stop closer to the current market and that's kind of the benefit of using the candlesticks that the lower time frames can help us see something that's going to involve over a longer period of time frame but also confirming what we're anticipating to happen. So, uh, Tulio asked me, uh, do I mostly use daily candles and sometimes hour candles and when? So Tulio, yeah, I, listen, I'm an old school trader. I learned how to draw charts on daily, on tissue paper and pencils. And yeah, we only had daily charts. So that's how I learned how to trade. I do believe that daily trends are really the trends that you should start to watch, but I don't have a problem working on intraday, especially if you're an intraday trader, uh, 60s, uh, 15s, 30 minutes. I'm not gonna go down into those super, super micro time frames. And again, I'm not gonna use those for uh, determining my trade action. I'm still gonna use the higher time frames. To determine my trade action, but what I might use is lower time frames to help me define um, more specific entries with less risk, or targets where I'm going to capture a little bit more profit. And this on this global uh, medical REIT is a great example of using a lower time frame to signify that hey, maybe I need to take a little bit of profit. Um, so the question is, can and I knew this was going to come as can twins occur on the bottom as well as in the top? Yeah, they can. They definitely can. But I want you to look for that three candle crash. I want you to look for that acceleration in price. Those are much stronger bottoms than twin bottoms. Um, 
usually, you know, when we talk about bottoms, uh, strong bottoms, you get this kind of this, you know, lower, low, higher, low, right? Um, you know, look like in here, right? Big red candle, lower, low, then higher, low, right? Lower, low, then higher, low. Those I think are doing a little bit more strong. And that's really kind of what the three candle drop is all about. Uh, and then uh, Wayne, my friend, Wayne, how's it going, Wayne? I haven't seen you in a while. Um, does a three candle drop and reversal also apply to a three candle rise? Again, is there a yin and yang to markets? Yes, but what I said to you before is I would rather look for a twin or a pincher's uh, tweezers scenario. Um, could that be very similar to a three candle uh, rise up? Yes. The difference is that I know from experience, from those experiences, those histories that I showed you, that a three candle drop is a picture of crash. Could there be a picture of exuberance? For sure. But um, again, I gave you a couple of different scenarios there. Okay. All right. It's two o'clock. I wanted to get out of here so you guys can go and watch Jerome Powell uh, talk. So let's do this. All right, takeaways. So again, the three patterns that I showed you are rare and unique. They're not gonna happen every day, um, but when they do, they have this very high probability when you combine them with our traditional technical analysis and they have a really good uh, success. So these are the ones I really kind of look for. Um, again, remember candlesticks are this price movement that represents the battles between bulls and bears. The like significance of waiting for candles to close, especially in that uh, three candle drop, right? We need that green candle to close. So don't just jump in there because it's a green candle because I'll tell you many times it will be green and then in the last second it'll turn back to red. And then analyzing candlesticks in that proper context, right? The size of the body, the, the location, where it is in the trend, the proportion that it is uh, to the candles that are around it? Is it is the sediment rising or is the sediment falling, right? And then combining all that information with our classical Western technical analysis, our trend lines, our channels, our Bollinger Mans, our moving averages, our supply and demand, our support and resistance, right? The candlestick pattern is just the confirmation of what we're seeing in our technical analysis, not the other way around, right? So we're gonna use the candlestick to confirm that's gonna be that last piece of evidence that we're gonna need. And then because the candlesticks have very unique trigger levels, which I showed you on a couple of examples, that'll allow us to get into a lot of these trades a lot quicker. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this session. This is kind of, uh, my bread and butter philosophy uh, in terms of candlesticks. Uh, I wanted to talk to Gene's point. He's, there's a ways to uh, free membership you can try for 30 days. And I also want to talk to you guys about our upcoming webinar. So next week, we're going to look at applied volatility rank and percentiles. And what we're going to do here is we're going to look at volatility and we're going to make an assessment based on ranks and percentages to tell us is the market expressing to us that there's more volatility and that premiums or options are expensive and that might be an opportunity for us to sell or that volatility is low and that premiums and options are cheap and so if i want to buy volatility uh, that might be a better strategy and we'll look at certain strategies that are combined with how we um, rank and the percentiles of our implied volatility. So join me for that, I think you'll enjoy. Also, I wanna remind you of those of you who are uh, premium members that on Fridays we have a new show, it's called Market on Close. And what we look at, you know, kind of the trends that are going on for this week. We look at some trading opportunities. We look at some charts. Uh, you know, it's kind of a little nice little banter. I have it with my uh, bar chart associate, Thomas. And we, try, we kind of look at different markets from different perspectives. And try to give you guys a little bit of clarity of where we think the market is going to go over the next week. Um, if you're not a premier member, again, you know, you can try it, try us out for 30 days and come in and check out what we're doing on 
Fridays. Okay, um, one last thing. All of today's um, information that I've talked to you about, about the theories about this, and I do get this question a lot, is what are some good books? So a lot of stuff I talk about comes from the teachings of Steve Neeson and uh, Japanese candlestick techniques. And this is more about the philosophy of Japanese candlesticks. And then uh, Thomas um, Bukowski, who actually looks at the application and what he's in his book is really kind of interesting. He'll, he'll break down uh, what different patterns work in different markets or are more uh, uh, applicable. And also he actually does some uh, back testing to see what the percentage of predictability of a lot of these candlestick patterns are. So uh, two really good books if you're interested in a little bit more in depth. Okay, Gene, anything else? Did I forget anything? No, I think we're all good. Okay, great. Well, listen, everybody, enjoy uh, today with Jer Chairman Powell, see what he's up to, and uh, stay safe out there, be healthy, and uh, the good of all trading.